Hello, Destroying Bechgedig here for Game Skinny, and I'm doing a Let's Play slash video walkthrough for The Sims 3 into the future. <coughs> oh gosh, excuse me. So this is the very last expansion pack for The Sims 3, which is a shame because I'm quite enjoying it. But it's not until fall 2014 when we see The Sims uh, 4 come out, so it's not like we don't have plenty of time to get to know this expansion pack quite well and the rest. So, first off, this is my very first Let's Play slash video walkthrough that I've ever done, so do forgive me if I'm a little rubbish at it and a bit dull. That might just be because I'm a bit of a rubbish and a bit dull person, and there's not much I can do about that right now. Um, but nonetheless, I hope this is going to be informative and entertaining. Hopefully. So I'm going to explain a bit about this. I'm not just going to create some sims and then sort of randomly go through the expansion pack. I'm going to create a single sim and I'm going to take that sim through a particular lifetime wish. This just means that we're able to focus specifically on doing that wish. Uh, so we don't have to have multiple sims going crazy and having to manage that. And we can just be a bit more focused about what we want to do. So this uh, video walkthrough slash let's play, we're going to be going through the made the most of my time lifetime wish. Now this is quite nice to start with because it means uh, one of the requirements is that we experience all three different states of the future, all different three sort of states of Oasis Landing. So that's dystopia, utopia and normal. So we'll be doing that, and we'll get round to doing some of the other lifetime wishes and experiencing some of the other things this expansion pack has to offer us afterwards, just not straight away. So, um, another thing, <laughs> my computer isn't exactly the highest of spec, so things might be a bit low loading, low slow, <laughs> sorry, slow loading. Um, so I'll be cutting in and out a bit just to kind of get rid of the loading times. Uh, like, setting up my time, uh, my town is going to be one of those loading times. Oh, I can't speak this morning. I think I need more coffee. Anyway, I shall cut away now uh, and wait for the game to load up. And I shall see you in Starlight Shores. No, no, Sunset Valley. Uh, oh, by the way, if you do want to add me um, as a friend, by all means, I'm the way bad. Here it is. My cursor is circling around it now. And then we can do things like swap magicians, because that's what we do these days. We swap magicians with friends we've made online but have never met. Okay, I shall see you momentarily. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sunset Valley. This is where we're going to be um, starting our game. I know it's I know it's like the very first um, Sims 3 uh, world, but I mean we're going to be spending a lot of our time in Oasis Landing anyway. So what we're going to do is just use this as a base and you know it's not actually a bad town uh, much better than Bridgeport don't get me started um, so why not why not go back to the beginning to play at the end which is I think is a nice sort of book ending of the um, series just a few notes first I'm not playing with any mods uh, so this is entirely as EA and Maxis intended the game uh, to play and game to run. Uh, also, uh, I'm not, I have not installed any premium store content here as well. So again, uh, no special advantages. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, play everything on sort of normal defaults and see just how easy it is for us to get through the lifetime wish on normal settings and without any cheaty things. As far as expansion packs go, I have all expansion packs apart from Supernatural. I'm working on fixing that. And I have all stuff packs apart from Katy Perry's Sweet Treats. That's because no one wants Katy Perry's Sweet Treats. Uh -uh. Hideous. Vile. Anyway, um, let's get on uh, and create a household. So here we are, we're in Create a Sim, and we're just going to um, do everything ra uh, random uh, for names and looks and stuff. So we've got Pauline Trailer, odd name. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to hand pick the traits and lifetime wishes, uh, well, lifetime wish, just to see um, how things 
it's just so we can try and see what is the best setup for this. Now, one of the requirements to achieve the make the most of my time, or made, I can't remember what tense it is, I'm going to be switching in and out, I haven't had enough coffee yet this morning. One of the requirements for made the most of my time is to get a legacy statue, and there's certain requirements to get a legacy statue. I'll explain those fully when we get into Oasis Landing. The legacy statue I'm going to go for is the Timekeeper, because the requirements of that uh, legacy statue is to exp is to change the world to dystopian and utopian, and then back to um, normal. Which is kind of what we have to do for the Lifetime Wish, so those two go hand in hand quite nicely. The other requirement for that statue is to become best friends with Emmett the Time Traveller. So he's the one that will give out the quests and sort of start everything. So what we want to do, seeing as um, switching between time zones, time zones? Um, <laughs> time alternatives doesn't really require any sort of specific skills and stuff. We're going to just try and go for the most friendly um, traits available to really qu quickly build that relationship up with Emmett. So definitely charismatic. Scarfly. Yeah, Scarfly indeed. Uh, what else do we have here? Friendly, definitely friendly. Tib, Tib Naja. Tib Naja indeed. Uh, good sense of humour always helps as well. Uh, what else do we want? What else do we want? Oh, I can't remember what's good. Oh, Schmoozer, that's the other one. And that, as far as I'm aware, is. I don't, I don't know why the music has suddenly gotten so loud. That's pretty much all we want. Um, as far as new traits, that's it's uh, the that come of the expansion pack. We have unstable. I haven't played with that yet. Um, I might do in another one, but I don't think it's really going to help us here. So <laughs> it means we can unpredictable flux and delusional episodes. It sounds a lot of fun actually. And the other new trait that has come with it is bot fan. Uh, that'll be really good for if you're going to do any sort of sim uh, plum bot building, not sim bot building. So plum bots and sim bots are two different things between ambitions and into the future. So um, we don't really need that. So we've got a free trait uh, to choose here. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think we'll just go with lucky, just to make things lucky. And then we can choose the lifetime wish. Which is made the most of the time. I can't do my alphabet this morning either. Uh, ah, there we go. No, that's not it. Come on. Made the most of my time. So there you can see, experience all alternative futures and be honoured with a legacy statue. So there we go. We have her lifetime wish sorted. Everything else I'm just leaving to chance. Let's get straight into this. So, um, what we're going to do is going to move Paul, Paul, I can't remember her name already, I've forgotten it. It's awful of me. Going to move her in. Um, by the way, I had no idea why the music keeps suddenly getting louder and softer. It's hurting my ears, uh, and it's probably not doing wonders for you guys trying to hear me uh, over it. Anyway, I'm just going to move uh, whoever this girl is. Yeah, it's Pauline Trailer, isn't it? Uh, into the prefabulous furnished, so we don't have to faff around uh, putting new furnishings in, etc. And we can just get straight away into Oasis Landing and start working on that lifetime wish. So, just like um, all other sort of um, new expansion packs, and sort of, there's always right at the beginning. There's always like sort of like a gaggle of NPCs that come around to do stuff and introduce you to the expansion pack. So we're going to have to suffer the irritating mascot again. And then what will happen is the time portal and Emmett will show up. And we'll be away. So in the meantime, let's read something. I must say, Pauline, your taste in bedsheet is awful. What's she reading? 
swish, dribble, swish. That's um, I, 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 either um, a soccer book or a golfer with some saliva problems. So yeah, just waiting for the time portal to turn up. It will turn up. It'll take some time. She can swish, dribble and swish to her heart's content in the interim. Oh, here's the mascot. Gordon Elrod. No one likes you. Especially when you walk like that. And you're dressed as a llama. Oh, you like it, do you? Well, there you go. So let's get rid of that. We don't need that. We're not going to university in this playthrough. Go away! Shoo, shoo, go away. No one likes you. You suck. Just ignore him and he might disappear. Come on, time portal. You haven't got all the time in the world. Or do we? Uh, no, we don't. I, I've got stuff to do today. Rather than sit here playing The Sims 3. That's not to say I don't enjoy sitting here playing The Sims 3. I clearly do. It's great. Hmm. Here it is! Here's the time portal at last. Hooray! So here we go, let's go inspect the portal. Because that's what you do when something really weird and smoking arrives in your front lard, uh, front lard? Front yard. You go and you expect it. You inspect it. I can't speak this morning. You go up to it, you tap it with your foot, like that. It then starts this kind of crazy electric glow, and you stand right next to it going, hmm, hmm, what's this? I don't know. Do I think I should be running from it? Maybe not. Oh, a man just came out of it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Emmett the Time Traveller. Greetings, I am Emmett Releva. You seem like an adventurous sim. Perhaps you'd like to use my time portal. All time travelers need an almanac to chart your actions in the present. Reflect your sims. I, oh, I didn't quite read that properly. Oh, and, oh, gosh, it's all going a bit mad. Right. So what Emmett does is, it's a bit like in World Adventures, where certain NPCs will offer you lines of opportunities slash quests, I suppose. Now, if you've got multiple people in your household and you have one of your sims who has this lifetime wish um, uh, made the most of my time, have them meet Emmett, because the very first opportunity uh, this gives you is the reward is an improved relationship, so you're right on a good stead straight away with building uh, a relationship to Emmett to become best friends of him to get that Time Traveller legacy statue. This is a really um, simple quest. You just go around finding these power cells which will just appear around on your lot. Nothing too difficult. Goodbye, mascot. I'm going into the future where you're dead. How'd you like that? Uh, oh, there's loads back here. So there's always more than enough. Oh, neighbours. Seriously, neighbours? There's a time portal in the front of my yard. And you just casually waltz up to the front door. You're not there. You're not real. Hmm. 
Uh, just look at the fact that uh, something giant and glowing in the front yard of this new person's house. So yes, we've completed that um, opportunity now, and you can see just how much relationship bonus you get. No, don't talk, don't flatter Jack Bunch um, with Emmett to start off. So there we go. So now we can end up going to Oasis Landing. So let's do that. Are you sure you would have your sin travel to the future? Yes. Otherwise I wouldn't have clicked on it. So here we go. Into the future! Oh, we are, we're in Oasis Landing. Joy, excitement, and oh, isn't that pretty? So here we are. Into Oasis Landing. Why do you want to go on vac- Oh, meet a local. I was about to say, are you going to go on vacation? You're in the future. Uh, so Emmett is currently invisible. Oh, the air is just talking to her. The air in the future talks to you. Um, right. So, as I said, Emmett's going to give you a few uh, opportunities, uh, and the, the reward for this one is simoleons, um, but some of the awards are going to be advanced technology skill building, which I'll get to in a moment. Oh, actually, I'll get to now. Um, advanced technology skill is another skill you can learn in the future. Uh, you get this by just using a heck of a lot of future technology. The jetpack is one of these pieces of technology that will build your skills. Um, this will make you be able to do fun things like if you build it to a certain point you can start woohooing in the air on a jetpack. Not very private, but there you go. And also upgrade some of the future technologies to make them even better uh, if you happen to own a home lot. I can therefore tinker around things. Ah, there's Emmett. He's finally arrived. So, this first quest he wants us to fly. We'll get a jetpack, and he'll want us to fly around with it. Um, uh, friendly introduction. Oh, that doesn't work. Uh, sorry, distracted. Start using jetpack. And then, jetpack. Fly around. Pretty simple. And using the jetpack also gives you a, a nice little bit of a moodlet. As you can see here, we're already starting to build some manner of skill just by using the jetpack. Now, we need to build our advanced technology skill to at least level one to be able to start changing the future. So uh, I'm, it's the first level of a skill, so it's really easy to obtain. So we're just going to keep doing um, these opportunity quests uh, and using technology until we get that first level skill then we can go straight back into the present and start changing the future and getting that legacy statue so now he wants us to meet plum bots so let's meet some plum bots doesn't seem entirely competent oh kabam that's hilarious, actually. So, quickly, just a quick note about where we've landed. Um, I haven't explained it yet. This is the community... No, back out, back out. Thank you. This is the community living centre. It's kind of like your base camp from uh, World Adventures. Except here, we have toilets and bathrooms, and it's not a real faff to be living in. So, I'll show you around now. There are beds, well, they're actually dream pods. Dream pods are one of the new technologies uh, where you can dream and influence a dream and get certain um, needs bar refreshes and moodlets from them. 
showers and all the entertainment stuff so it's it's basically like a, a really nice home that you don't have to pay for and you don't have to pay rent for but of course you can't edit uh, and especially you can't end up upgrading the food synthesizers but there you go so this is where Emmett will always be found in whatever version of Oasis Landing uh, you go to and also various other NPCs and also Simbot as well. So he wants us to go meet a Simbot. Um, let's go meet a Simbot. Friendly introduction. We will do uh, a video walkthrough slash let's play of the uh, the Simbot lifetime wish as well to build a Simbot reach maximum level of Simbot building and put a sentence chip into a Simbot. Now there is a bit of a bug at the moment in this is that you can go up, you can initiate an action, you can go up to them but it, they'll just stand there forever so what you need to do is cancel it and redo it. It's really irritating. I'm kind of hoping they'll fix that pretty soon. These by the way are the new instruments you can use. Uh, and now we just need to get it to expl uh, explain its function. So here we go, we can do that. So these have their own skill as well. There's a whole legacy statue you can get, which um, means you take one of these back to the present and play it to at least 10 people, um, and you get a legacy statue. That's another thing you can do, uh, but you do need to get your skill to level 10. And you can play Debussy if you like, just like they were doing there, um, for no reason. Anyway, on to the next thing. So more simoleons, uh, adjust a plum bulb's trait chips. Um, so it's just trait chips. You've got some trait chips here from Emmett as well to give. Oh, what? It's all too, it's all too noisy. Aren't plum bots the most amazing things? Yeah, not really. And there we go. Primary functions, Robotney, friendly functions, and Robo Nanny. And we can adjust chips. So. We go, uh, Robo Nanny, Hollow Projector. Let's add that there. So you can add chips um, like that, and they give your Simbots different traits and stuff. So we've done that. More Simoleons. So there we go. Um, what we're going to want to do now is get back to Emmett and assist him in his research to start getting through that opportunity line and start building up our advanced technology still. Sorry, I was trying to I was almost forgetting what I was doing there. Uh, are we going to be using the travel tubes? Yes, so these are, these are fun. They're a bit like lifts or elevators as you Americans call them. And they're just kind of tubes that just go up. And they also build your advanced technology skill too, just by using them. So pretty much anything you use, that's one of these new uh, items, builds your advanced technology skill. Oh no, she's going to be sick. Except the toilet, because the toilet's still the toilet. Except the TV and the hi-fis. Which is a bit irritating, because this is like, it's still advanced technology. <laughs> Although it does really just do the same thing as it does in the in the past. Uh, other things you can use to build your skill. Hoverboard, you can use that instead of walking. That's a really great way of using your skill. I don't know. Hide CJ Daniel clothes. Why are we doing that all of a sudden? And then also these little ball things here are actually computers. Um, they hover about and they project sort of a holographic screen of what you're doing playing games. So uh, I can't remember if these little sprites, which are a bit like Pokemon really, you can kind of collect all different sorts. Um, 
I'm not sure if they build your skills anyway. Well, right, well, uh, free will is going a bit mad. Um, actually, let's let's see. Let's um, talk to Wilbert and clean Wilbert, and I think that actually might build your advanced technology skill as well. These are a bit like a Tamagotchi. If anyone's old enough to remember Tamagotchis, I certainly am. I never had one, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but yeah, you just have to clean them, talk to them, have them interact with uh, other hollow sprites as well. Oh, so we didn't actually get the um, thing for some reason, but we are actually on to the next opportunity, I've just realised. We need to give the plum bot a high five, so let's do that. Oh, whilst we're here, let's... Yes, it does build advanced technology skills, so that's nice. So another thing we can do with these hollow computers is look up people on the hollow web. So you know we've got a, a, a want to do it with Spark. It's essentially Facebook stalking. Just kind of look up people on the hollow web and do that. <laughs> what is great though, it makes you learn a few things without them uh, about them without actually going and interacting with them. So you can learn their star sign, their jobs, uh, some of their personal traits as well. And so you might actually want to do that with Emmett, just so you can find a few more things about him. Um, oh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That, I hope that wasn't too loud. I did try to move the microphone out of the way in time. So we go, that's the hollow computer. Don't shake it. <sighs> So yes, you might want to browse it on Emmett to find out some of his traits as well, which might, which will help you build relationship with him a bit quicker if you know a bit more about him. And there you go, we have built our first advanced technology skill. What will the future hold? It's anyone's guess. Advanced technology might appear daunting at first, but the advanced technology skill will be gained at an accelerated rate while visiting the future. With practice and patience, Pauline will now know how to use advanced technology like a pro. Novices will have the ability to change the future on the time portal, receive the Fruity Bob's recipe in the food synthesizer, and unlock additional dreams in the dream pod. Mm. So yes, you actually need that first advanced technology level skill to actually start changing the future, which we have now. So, um, let's get rid of one of those. Let's do that. So let's just finish up looking up Spark. We remember Spark graduated from nothing. That's a very helpful holiday computer. So let's find, find Spark, give him a high five, finish off his opportunity. Where's Spark gone? Spark! Hello, Spark! Am I, am I making a silly space to spark? Oh! No, that's Robota. I can't find spark. Anyway, let's, let's um, get friendly with Robota and give him a high five. High five is a new interaction, as far as I'm aware, um, within this. See, again, even if uh, an, an action is initiated by an NPC, <laughs> It won't work straight away, and you have to cancel it and have it done again. So let's introduce ourselves to Robota. I said, let's introduce Thank you. And then it should be under friendly. High five. There we go. Um, I, I think we're done. We don't need to do any more of... Emmett's things. As I said earlier, there's a lot of there's a lot of the opportunities that Emmett gives out that really build your advanced technology skill. That's going to be really good if you're doing the lifetime wish to max out your advanced technology skill and buy a lot of future technology items. But we don't need that for changing the future. So um, it's really nice to mess around with that. It's a lot of fun, especially as one of the um, one of the opportunity arcs, as it were, from Emmett is to get into the crashed spaceship in the wasteland, um, which is interesting. 
But we'll do that for that. Uh, and now we're just going to work on changing the futures. And here we are. Back in Sunset Valley. And now we can get around to changing the future. So to do that... Ooh, I've got Time Paradox uh, Sickness. I've not had that before. Um, I have heard it's fatal, so we might want to get to the hospital to sort it out. We admitted the Time Sickness. So you do want to do that as soon as possible, because uh, you can die from this. Um, there is a lifetime reward. Sorry, I think my um, my microphone wasn't <laughs> quite close to my mouth. There is a lifetime reward for making sure you don't get time paradox sickness. Um, so you don't have to keep doing this whenever you get in and out of the future or the present. I, I I think I'm I've not had to deal with this before, so I'm assuming it's three. No, three, sorry, wrong three. <laughs> so once we do that, um we need to get on to changing the future. So I to change the future you just need to go into the Almac of Time. Now we haven't actually gone through this. Um it's actually a good idea to look at this uh when you first get into the future. It just kind of like lays out what sort of things are available. So there's all the three different types of future. You can only trigger the event when you're in the present. Next tab is your descendants. It shows you what your descendants are. Mine are ostensibly poor. You can mess around uh, with changing the makeup of your descendants in the future by doing stuff in the past. More than the present, I suppose. And then there's the legacy statues, and this gives you all the different sort of information on what legacy statues you can get. So as I said, the um, illustrious entertainer with the laser Rivnicon. Uh, there's one for Plumbotics, which uh, includes installing a sentence chip in the present day. Winning the lottery and donating 50,000 simoleons uh, at Town Hall. At lottery is a new thing that comes in as well. Because um, I remember when I first started, this is like, I've never played the lottery in this game in my life. Um, what you do is you go into the future, go to the Town Hall, check the lottery records and come back, buy a ticket and you win a lot of money. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, timekeepers is what we're doing. Become best friends of a time traveller, then change the future to dystopia and utopia, then repair the time line. Repair the future timeline back to normal Oasis landing. And there's also little awards for this as well. Um, nearby Sims. Oh, trendsetter. Get the clothing pedestal and then take it to present day. Little awards. Uh, a few rewards as well. Give away money to Sims. Increase relationships with Plumbots at a faster rate, and more. Well, there we go. So that's what we're going to do. So I just need to wait for Pauline's sickness to go away. So there you go. It's already taken off the um, uh, the negative moodlet. Yes. So I think we're going to change it to dystopian first. I quite like the idea of um, going from bad to good. And then back to normal. It's just time travel sickness not to take all the time in the world sickness. Come on. I'm impatient. I need to get on with changing the future. Do you know how important I am? Hospital people? Oh, here we are. So to start changing the future, all you need to do is go into your almanac and trigger this event. And then Emmet will pop up and give you a few uh, opportunities which will end up having an effect on the future. There is a lifetime reward which gives you an item uh, which means you can automatically 
just change the future, which is really handy. It means you don't have to go through all this, but this is a lot of fun. As you can see, some of these um, rewards is advanced technology, skill building, so that's all good too, and especially if you want to build that advanced technology. So if this one's fun, we need to use a giant magnet outside three times. Not sure why aiming it at the hospital is going to do, but here you go. So the whole point of trying to trigger a dystopian future is to try and scare people um, that the sky is falling and that environmentalism is a load of bull. You do get to keep this magnet as well, so it's, uh, and it does actually attract space rocks. There you go, it attracted the space rock right there. So if you're actually hunting space rocks, it's actually quite a nice... Was that a giant... Was that a horrible purple car? Anyway, it's actually quite a nice item to have. You can just stand there, attract space rocks, and you get space rocks. So you don't need to use it in different places, you just need to use it three times, and you're done, really. Another space rock. Yeah, not sure why aiming it at the hospital does anything. It doesn't seem to make any sense, really, but then again, several things in this game don't. And another space rock. And then on to the next opportunity. The League of Concerned Doomsayers. That worked better than I thought. Not only did we change the Earth's gravitational pull to attract meteors, but a group called the League of Concerned Doomsayers sprung up. It looks like you're on the right track changing the future. Go to a meeting and see how serious they are. Okay, let's do that. So you've got two bits of iron as well, actually, rather than just space rock, and some tungsten carbide. Carbide, probably. I prefer carbide. I am a European piece of rock. I am tungsten carbide. I'm not sure where I'm from, but I think it's the Mediterranean. I'm terrible at accents, by the way. I'll just stick to my winsomely British accent. I think I'm going to <laughs> speed this up because I really don't have anything to say during this bit. So let's get through the uh, meeting with the League of Concerned Doomsayers as quickly as possible. And here we go. Uh, great woolly llamas. He says that a lot. It gets a bit irritating. So now we've got to go around convincing six sims that the sky is falling. This is not like the World Adventures where you have to speak to sims about stop it. Uh, certain things. Um, you have to build certain relationships with them before you can even do them successfully. This is much easier. Just go up to them, say, convince the sky is falling, and it's done. It's pretty easy. Uh, I'm not sure if I like it being this easy. I just feel that sometimes, um, you know, it's a bit too easy. It's, your hand is held a little bit too much, I think, in this expansion pack. Even though it is a lot of fun to sort of mess with the future, some of these futures have nice little things as well. So convincing more people that the sky is falling. It does also give them this nice uh, <laughs> little mood effect, which means that every so often they will <laughs> randomly run around screaming, which is a lot of fun. It's a bit chicken little, isn't it? Except this time the sky is actually going to be falling, uh, as you'll see in this dystopian future. Oh, <laughs> 
It's four out of six, so we're on to the fifth. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. So once we do this, we get on to the next stage, um, which is actually a little bit more difficult. It's not as quite as straightforward as just going up to people and clicking on the special interaction. Yeah, and now we need to talk trash talk the environment with six sims so we can do that again there's no relationship requirement to initiate it however it doesn't work with everyone if they love the outdoors or if they are neat or if they uh, are environmentally concerned they will not react and it's not going to be a successful um, successful thing it does also mean you learn traits about people if you ever want to get to socialise with them a bit more. So yes, it didn't work with Cornelia Goff. Uh, see, successfully talk trash, uh, trash talk the environment. Still at zero. Okay. <laughs> Marty Keaton is also not going to do it because he loves the outdoors. There you go. <laughs> people running around randomly screaming. <laughs> He does amuse me. Anyway, let's stop him from screaming and trash talk the environment. Oh dear. I do love some of uh, this game sometimes. Just things like that just crack me up. Clearly. So let's see if this actually works. Ah, yes, it has. And now you can get back to randomly running around. So we know that Marty Keaton it doesn't work with. Who's over here? Who's this? I have never seen him. Iqbal Alvi. I've not seen him in a... Uh, <laughs> in Sunset Valley before ever. Uh, so... Smearing <laughs> screaming again. Oh, I'm easily amused. Yep, it's worked again with him. Let's try Bessie. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, people who uh, have traits like couch potato or anything else which kind of like that. Again, Bessie is neat. You get to find that out too about the person by doing this interaction. Let's try Cyclone Sword. He's a computer geek. He's surely going to not care about the environment. Yeah, there we go. That's three people done. Uh, who else is around here that we haven't spoken to yet and tried? Sue Scotch. Let's try her. Let's see if we can trash talk the environment with her. Or I can take a break to eat a hot dog because um, <laughs> I haven't been looking at all at my needs, even though it's been on the screen all the time. Uh, and she's quite hungry and needs to pee, so we'll make sure both those things happen. It's 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 hard work. Well, it's not really hard work. It's quite easy, but it's hard work convincing the people that the sky is falling and that environmentalism is a load of junk. Ah, <laughs> oh, finally had a hot dog though. Sue Scotch running away. She is. Anyway, we're getting quite tired, so we might as well just go home and pick this up tomorrow morning. I think I'm pretty much sure that this is the last stage before turning the future to dystopian. Anyway.
So we've not got long to go. Oh, it's Emmett. Not sure what he's doing here. Oh, just do your thing. So let's. Let's get you to bed. So let's speed this up. There's not much going on. Um, uh, what are you doing? Uh, there's not much interesting uh, with just watching Pauline sleep. I mean, we'll get on to successfully trash talking the environment to three more Sims. Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. 